Hi everyone, Gwil from Fothergram here. In this tutorial, I'm wearing our fancy HoloLens 2 headset rather than using the mobile phone because we are going through some of the get and deconstruct components in the Fothergram for Grasshopper plugin. Uh, we'll talk through all of the different sensor data and events that you can uh, track using Fothergram to trigger changes in your parametric model and also work through how to use the kind of get and deconstruct pattern in order to create data types which can typically be used in in normal parametric modeling workflows so to begin with let's have a look at the get devices component so the get devices component um, is going to retrieve all of the connected devices in your session uh, you can see it flickering here in grasshopper it's giving us the same data as we're getting in our Rhino preview. So I'm going to just turn off the Rhino preview. Um, and we see our HoloLens headset here. Uh, the difference between the Rhino preview and the get devices component in Grasshopper is we can deconstruct this device object to get some data out of it and use it uh, in our parametric model. So I'm going to create one of these deconstruct device components and see what we've got. So that's going to return the plane of the device, the position and orientation of the headset or mobile phone, as well as the name and type of the device. So we could do things like um, filter just for mobile or HoloLens devices or filter for just a specific device and use only that device uh, to trigger changes in our definition. To give you an example of how this data might be useful, uh, we could orient geometry onto the headset. We could tell where the headset is in space or the phone is in space and which direction it's looking. Uh, a little exercise we often do with students using Fologram for the first time and if they're working with headsets is we model up a mask and orient that onto the headset as a kind of a carnival exercise. I've got a little robot mask that I've modeled here in Rhino and we're going to chuck that onto the headset here using the device plane. So turning me into a robot. And we could of course use the sync geometry component to send that back and then all other headsets or mobile devices in the session would see um, this kind of mask in front of uh, my headset. Now um, you can also use the device plane for creating heads up displays. So creating geometry which stays in a fixed position relative to the device but we tend to not to recommend doing that just because um, the maximum frame rate of Grasshopper is about 15 FPS max. And so you will notice if you're orienting geometry to the headset, it's gonna, there's gonna be a bit of a delay and a lag as you move the headset around really, really quickly. Um, you, that geometry is not actually gonna be locked to your field of view and that can make you feel a bit uncomfortable. So avoid using heads up displays in Grasshopper, though this is how you can build it if you want to. Now, you'll notice that there's two inputs to the get devices uh, component, and these two inputs are a pattern which apply to most of the get components. So we typically have an input which um, specifies the event sh which should, should cause this component to update, and then we have some inputs which are usually filters. So in this case, we can filter just for headsets or for mobile devices. If we want to change the event, we can go up here to the Fologram Types menu, grab the event type and plug that in here. And that's going to give us a whole lot of options for different events to trigger uh, this get component. So by default, most of the components will um, trigger just on update, which is as often as Fologram sends data from your mixed reality device into Grasshopper. But if we change this from update to say tap, now this isn't gonna update at all unless we detect a tap I'm just gonna flip the headset down in Grasshopper. Or in with the whole lens, sorry. So you'll notice now when I perform this tap gesture, then this get component's gonna update. So is our deconstruct component, so is our orient component. So we can control when um, these components are updating uh, using this event. I'll put that back on update, it'll update all the time. Okay, so that is the get devices component. Now let's have a look at the get hands component. So the get hands component is also going to, by default, update uh, as frequently as possible. And it's going to give us the points of any tracked hands in our 
model. On a mobile device, this won't output anything because mobile devices don't track hands. Uh, we also have a filter for choosing just the left or the right hand, and then we get the hand objects out of this component. Again, we can use the deconstruct pattern to deconstruct that hand object into things we can use. So we get the device name, we get a list of all of the points, and we get a Boolean telling us whether this is the left or the right hand. So for instance, we can use a list item to grab just one particular point. So that's getting our thumb. And then maybe we could record that thumb position over time. To make, say, a thumb drawing app. So there's a thumb, plug it into a data recorder, and now I'm drawing with my thumb. So just a little example of how we might use hand tracking data as a modeling tool. Hand tracking data could also be useful for tracking things like just how a user is normally interacting with their environment or with a tool or something like that. Um, we've had uh, users of Fologram building tools for controlling robots and manipulating robots with um, hand information. You can use both hands to create pretty powerful 3D modeling apps. Maybe use your left hand to control the width of a line and your right hand to control where that line goes. It gives you a lot of freedom to manipulate things in 3D space. So that's get hands. Now let's have a look at get pointers. So pointers um, are essentially hand rays um, which extend out from your hands and you'll see them here as dashed lines extending out from um, the, the HoloLens. I'm going to change this to update so we see them all the time. So you can see this ray coming out from our hand and letting me select uh, something in our model. When these are used with the tap event, um, we basically will update this uh, pointer component whenever somebody taps, like so. Make that tap. So we can use these um, pointer events in many different ways uh, using the deconstruct pointer component which is going to give us quite a few bits of information. Um, and these are particularly useful because the pointer in Fologram records state. So if we want in our application in Grasshopper to be doing different things in our Grasshopper definition based off a, whether a user is tapping or dragging or releasing their finger or you know, any of these other events that we can, um, we can detect here, hovering, holding, all of these states are tracked by the pointer because it's the pointer which is actually doing those things. So when we deconstruct the pointer type, we get the device that owns the pointer, we get the endpoint of the pointer so we can tell where it is that we've actually tried to tap on something, we get the, um, uh, the target, uh, sorry, the source end of the pointer is usually our, our hand or our device, the target is the end, the thing we're actually tapping on, and that'll either just be a line um, projected out by a maximum distance in space if we're tapping on nothing, or it will be a point on an object if we're tapping on something which can be interacted with. We get a Boolean indicating whether or not it's left or right hand, which triggered the pointer. We get a Boolean indicating whether the pointer is currently pressing, which again is useful for triggering changes in our definition just for while the user is pressing. And then we get a list of states uh, for the pointer. Um, these states are then often used with the state gate component to control uh, how our grasp definition should update. And there'll be a subsequent tutorial uh, looking exactly at that. Pointers are also useful for building, um, you know, drawing apps and modeling apps and things like that. If you want to draw at some distance away from your hand or if you want to draw with a mobile phone. Okay, next component we're going to look at is the get scan component. And what this is going to do is it's going to return the point cloud scan uh, from the HoloLens 2 device, or if you have a supported mobile device, so a um, 
iOS device with a depth camera in it, it's going to return the um, spatial mesh uh, built up by that, that device. So this scan, again, by default, it's going to run at about um, 15 FPS. Here we're scanning my hand. I'm holding that up in front of the HoloLens. If I lean back a little bit, we probably scan my microphone and uh, things like that. And again, this is coming in at around at about 15 FPS. Now, the advantage of the get scan component, or what, what that component um, is useful for, is it's really, really useful for live feedback applications. So if, for instance, you are doing some carving or some sculpture, you're manipulating like a block of, of clay or a block of plaster, you could be, or a block of foam, you could be scanning the surface of that, um, that object and providing some feedback to the user as to how accurately the physical object matches some digital object by comparing the point cloud scan to the geometry that you're trying to make. Um, and we've got a couple of examples on exactly that on uh, the Fologram docs. Again, the scan object, um, I think we can deconstruct that one as well. That's going to give you the device that detected the scan or that, that initiated the scan and then also the point cloud object. So Fologram adds support for point clouds in Grasshopper. We have a couple of um, uh, tools here for constructing and deconstructing point clouds. We can deconstruct that point cloud and get the points, the normals and the colors. Um, keep in mind that the point cloud data from the HoloLens though is going to just be black and white. Or, or all white, sorry, there's no, no RGB information in that point cloud. Uh, we also can um, track the environment. So that's going to be the spatial mesh, which the HoloLens is building up over time. This headset hasn't seen very much of our office at the moment, and so there's a pretty limited spatial mesh here. This is a very low res spatial mesh, um, but it can still be useful for doing things like getting a rough sense of the um, volume of the space you're in uh, for, you know, figuring out how far like floor to ceiling heights are or, or approximate um, distances between walls and things like that. Also kind of useful for um, uh, doing like quick, quick 3D scans of models, which reminds me that another kind of good use case for the scan component is if we ask for that scan only when we tap rather than while we update. Whenever I tap on the headset, we're going to get an updated scan. And because this scan is oriented to our headset and our headset is tracked pretty accurately, if we connect that scan to a data recorder, essentially we get a 3D scanning tool because all those scans should pretty closely match up. So I'm just scanning my monitors here, which are actually not going to scan particularly accurately just because they're black and reflective. But you can see that all of those scans will stitch together. And this is a way of making like a very low res approximate um, 3D scan of large objects as well. Okay, next, let's look at the get QR codes tool or component. What that's going to do is um, uh, give us the position and detected data of any QR codes that the HoloLens can see. So I'm just holding one up in front of the camera now. It's the placement QR code that we used in the demo before. And you can see in Grasshopper, we're tracking that rectangle. Um, as we move around. So on the HoloLens, QR codes track pretty well. You can see that's updating reasonably quickly. I'm just going to delete my get scan component. And if we use the deconstruct QR code component, we get the device that tracked it, the rectangle, which is effectively the position and orientation and size of the code the label of the code, which is the data that, it it, that it contains, and also the age of the code, which is when it was last detected. So by default, if we put this code away now, even though I can't see it with the HoloLens anymore, 
we're still going to output um, the label of that code. So if you only want to filter for codes which are currently visible, you can just do a cull pattern on this based off the time since the device last saw that code. Uh, the latest version of Fologram supersedes support for Aruco markers with just this get QR code component. So if you have a previous definition which was using Arucos, just use QR codes with labels of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. like your old um, Aruco marker definition and the performance should be uh, similar or better just using QR codes with the added flexibility that you can contain more data in QR codes than just the index of the marker. Okay, that pretty much goes through all of the um, get devices and, uh, oh, sorry, get components and deconstruct components that you'll need to know when working with Fologram. Um, good luck.